This is Pasties Herb. We are a team on an assignment to build the fate of men and set their hearts on fire through the media system. With hundreds of insightful videos here on our channel, we hope to bless and bond with you. Don't forget to click the like button, turn on notifications, and subscribe. We love and celebrate you. Whoever you want, if you want to, to be famous, lift, if God wants to Lord, lift you, you can and lift announce you through to the world me. from Nigeria, your feet Whoever must touch Lagos. There are two cities your feet must touch, Abelkuta and Lagos. If your feet does not touch it prophetically, your voice will not be heard from this nation because there is a covenant. In the realm of the spirit, Abelkuta gave birth to Lagos. Why do you need the power of God in your life? Let me give you two reasons. Number one, why do you need empowerment in your faith adventure? Number one, I wrote here, that to fulfill your assignment and to advance the program of God to fulfill your assignment and to advance the program of God skill and human competence is not enough once it has to do with fulfilling your God ordained destiny and then advancing the program of God skill and human competence is not enough you will need more than skill i submit to you you will need more than human competence if you want to birth the purposes of god effectively hallelujah the first assignment of spiritual power is to engrace you to be able to fulfill your god ordained destiny it takes more than skill did the bible not say except the lord builds a house it says they labor in vain that build it except the lord watches over a city he said the watchmen watch it but in vain it is vain to wake up early in the morning the bible says and to sleep late at night only to eat the bread of sorrow he says but he gives his beloved sleep so when it has to do with birthing the purposes of god it will take more than intellectual power it will take more than just um he said it is not by power human power not by might but by my spirit say amen the second reason why believers need to be empowered is because of a very interesting statement jesus himself made jesus in bringing the revelation of the church started by asking them a question he said who do men say that i the son of man am some said you are elijah some said you are one of the prophets he said but now who do you say that i am and they all kept quiet peter speaking by the spirit said i know who thou art he says thou art christ the son of the living god are we right on that and then he said peter flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but the spirit of my father and he says thou art peter and he says upon this rock i will build my church my ecclesia and he says the gate of hell jesus himself is speaking about the church and he does not leave us in the dark as to the fact that there is an adversary and he said the adversary is not just an individual called satan it is an organized system he calls it the gate of hell it was paul in his Pauline exegesis now his epistle to the saints Paul by revelation got the organogram of the satanic kingdom and he now began to teach us and he structured it so intelligently he said we wrestle not against flesh and blood is that in your bible but against principalities against powers is that true against rulers of darkness against spiritual wickedness that reside in the heavenlies paul saw this by revelation and he said listen the church is being confronted by an intelligent satanic kingdom when the man who was possessed of a legion in gadara when jesus came and the demons began to speak there was a legion of demons but not all of them were speaking 
So there was an organized satanic kingdom. Jesus himself began to speak and said, when a spirit leaves a man, that that spirit goes through dry regions. Is that true? Looking for a place of refuge and not finding any, the spirit will advise itself that I will go back to my house. He's still calling the man my house. So it means that these demon spirits are stubborn. Even though they have left, they are still claiming ownership. My house. And he said when he comes and finds the believer clean but empty, he will not just stay alone. It will go and gather other demons greater than itself. That means there is ranking in the demonic kingdom. Listen carefully. When Daniel came to Babylon and God was lifting him through the efficiency of his prayer life, there were spirits that operated, the spirits of the Medes and the Persians. Are we together now? These spirits observed that there was one man whose prayer life and spiritual understanding was corrupting the program of hell. It, it seemed to be crippling that antichrist system. And those spirits started working through people in government to pass a law, to pass a policy that would prohibit prayer for just 30 days. That was the only allowance Satan needed to wreak havoc within a territory. Listen to me. If you must bear the purposes of God in Yola, let me announce to you that there are spirits in every region that predate the people who came to that region. Whether you believe it or not is not the issue. You understand? Jesus himself acknowledged himself as the head of all principalities. He acknowledged their existence. And it is spiritual naivety, I tell you sincerely, to ignore the reality of the dark kingdom. Many people do not know Satan's determination to destroy the program of God. You want to know how determined Satan is? Study the book of Job. That he was coming to and fro the earth. Have you gone around the world? Have you gone around the earth even once? Yet Satan has that energy to keep going from pillar to post. Searching for men who are serious with God. Searching for men whose destinies count. I hope you know that Satan afflicts everybody. But in this end time, he's not looking for everybody. There are men who are equal to nations. These are the ones he's looking for. Rather than destroying 5,000 people in Yola, that's too much work. He can zoom his attention on one rising prophet, one rising church, one rising apostle. Because in your destruction is the destruction of others. So when Satan heard that a deliverer called Moses was born. Look at what Satan was doing. To find Moses, he killed every child. Because he was looking for one person. One same thing happened when jesus was born children cried the bible says there was lamentation and weeping in rama because one person do you know that for god to have brought you for this conference whether you are inside or outside this is a prophetic convergence it's a sign that there is something about your destiny and there are many destinies that are connected to you and let me tell you the truth when jesus came as savior because I hope you know that Satan is not that accurate. Even Satan did not know who the Savior was. So from Genesis, he has been looking for who is the Savior. He thought it was Moses. Then he thought it was Joseph. Once he suspects that you carry the DNA connected to salvation, he starts attacking immediately. From the killing of Abel by Cain down to the killing of John, everything was an attempt to look for Jesus. So when he found out that the nation of Israel were now the covenant people, he said, that's it. From that time, every other nation started fighting Israel. What did they do? The Messiah would come out of them. The whole journey from Genesis 3 down to the Gospels is Satan searching for that seed of the woman. So every time he suspected that it was this and that, he would attack them. Now watch this carefully. So John showed up by the spirit. And Satan had to use the Pharisees and the people to say, are you the Messiah? He wanted to verify so he would kill him. 
and john was already given a code in the wilderness to identify the messiah i hope you know john was a prophet while he was in the will look at the training of john he had to eat locusts and wild honey separated from his parents to be in the wilderness to be the man who ordains jesus look at that kind of training and he was told in the wilderness that when you see him you will know so john started the ministry of baptism i hope you know that the ministry of baptism was number one a prophetic adumbration as to what was going to happen to believers but number two it was a strategy to identify the christ so every time he poured water on people the heavens are not open go come the heavens are not open go the heavens are not open go and then one day he sees a 30 year old man standing and he says behold the lamb finally listen and in awe he said i'm not even worthy to untie the latchet of your shoes because as a prophet i've seen that you will be that deliverer jesus says suffer it to be so that all scripture will be fulfilled immediately he dipped him in water and brought him out god said satan there's no need hiding this is my beloved son that beloved son now watch this the moment god announced it the bible says the spirit drove jesus to the wilderness satan suspended every other assignment and was waiting in the wilderness is it not in your bible nothing else became a serious thing for satan he waited patiently till jesus was done fasting and he said jesus let's discuss you can bow down to me and i will give you all the glories of this world i don't have time i would have taught you about the mystery of this she goddess in revelation called jezebel there are two main strategies alignment and threat so when you start it is a principle of alignment they want to be part of you but if it does not work they will threaten you this is that you read all through scripture every time you see the manifestation of the spirit of jezebel she wants alignment and if the alignment does not work they will use force Are we together do you know why john was beheaded look at me you know why john was beheaded the anger that the devil had that so he knew the messiah and he kept that quote i am the voice of one crying the same way i hope you know he came in the spirit and the power of elijah the bible says and the same way jezebel was looking for the head of elijah that is the same way Herodias, the same, it's the same principle. Because John the Baptist is a prophetic and apostolic spirit that foreruns revival. Every time the move of God is about to show up, John must show up. John is not a person, you know I've taught you. John represents an apostolic and prophetic system. And it has two assignments. Number one, to restore fathers to sons, reconciliation. And number two, the spirit of judgment upon the wicked. The moment that happens, Jesus always comes. Whether as a person or as a move of God. Are we learning now? So I'm speaking about power. Without power, you will never be able to achieve the purposes of the kingdom. Please give us Psalm 66 and verse 3. Write it down, please. Psalm 66 and verse 3. Power is coming upon someone's life tonight. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God. The Bible says, say unto God. Let's read together. Say unto God, how terrible art thou in thy ways. It says, through the greatness of thy power power shall thy enemies submit themselves not through the greatness of your discussion not through the greatness of your english the language that the realm of the spirit understands is power acts chapter 10 and verse 38 peter while he was preaching the gospel in the house of cornelius speaking to the gentiles for the first time he said how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power he went about by that power doing good it takes more than compassion to do good it takes power he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for god was with him are we still together for god was with him the messianic prophecy in isaiah chapter 61 
it says the spirit of the lord is upon me because the lord had anointed me to preach glad tidings to the meek he had sent me to bind up the brokenhearted are we together to deliver them that are bruised them that are captive and so on and so forth all that by the power of the holy ghost even mary said how shall these things be seeing that i know not a man how can i be pregnant without a man he says don't worry this is the ministry of power to manifest impossible things is within the office of power he says the power of the highest shall overshadow you from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be hallowed Adonai from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same your name is to be hallowed Adonai. 